is this the right strategy? Are big corporations, you know, a couple companies controlling meat or fertilizer or oil, are they the problem? No, not at all. Thanks for having me back, Brian. You know, the administration wants you to believe that we've had decades and decades of extreme concentration across all the industries that you just mentioned. But over that same period of time, we had low to no inflation at all. But all of a sudden, inflation occurs in 2021, and that's the root cause of it. You know, Larry Summers, who's been sounding the alarm for inflation when the White House should have been listening last spring, got it right when he called it science denial. Yeah, okay, so make the case why it's not. If you've got a couple of companies that are controlling the beef market, the pork market, which, by the way, they are, the fertilizer market, how are they, which, by the way, they're making more money now. We all know that. That's provably correct. How are they not to blame? Well, I think first you have to look back and say, did we have concentration in those same industries before we had these run-up in price increases? And if you believe that the concentration in those industries is so severe that it's allowing the market players to manipulate prices above what they would already be, then why didn't that any of that occur prior to 2021? That's why I, I think Larry Summers means when he calls it science denial. I think the other key point to remember here is we have lots of mechanisms to, to fight over concentration and monopolies. These aren't monopolies. We have lots of industries where we have concentration, but still have extreme competition and more choices and lower prices for consumers, which at the end of the day is what we all want, lower prices for consumers. You know, you, you just heard Christine and I talking about fertilizer and actually in a different life. I used to trade this stuff as a commodities trader. That was a long, long time ago. It's a very different market now. But I do know this. It is a global market that is relying on natural gas prices. China and Europe are buying up all the liquefied natural gas from America they can. That spiked their prices. They've actually shut down fertilizer production there. The reason I bring this up, Neil, is that that's going to spike prices for everybody, including us. And last I'm told, fertilizer is kind of important for wheat and corn and, for food. and that's coffee exactly right, and Brian. even feed stock that you feed to cattle and pork. This is not somebody's problem. This is a global issue. It's a global, and look at input prices. This is exactly what you're talking about, Brian. In that particular case, the input price of natural gas uh, is uh, has gone up, which drives up fertilizer prices, which then drives up prices for feedstock, which then ends up at higher prices on the butcher shelf. The same is true across a lot of under, other industries as well, whether it was the chip shortage for car makers that drove up the prices of used vehicles last year to record levels, or the worker shortage crisis that's causing wages to go up and prices to go up across a whole host of industries. There are root causes of this. The administration is ignoring those root causes, as is Congress. And if instead they focus on competition and they try to use the government powers here to manipulate the market, what we're going to end up with is fewer items on shelves and higher prices. That's a proven fact every time the government tries to intervene in markets this way. Yeah, but they got to do something. I mean, Neil, you're in D.C., you know this, and President Biden is politically savvy. He knows this, that inflation is a killer. Killed Jimmy Card Carter's second term. I mean, this is a major story. Do you think that anybody, whether, whether it's Republican or Democrat, Libertarian, Independent, Green, Communist, whatever, does any political party have the ability to bring down prices? Well, they have the ability not to add fuel to the fire. So, for example, this Build Back Better bill, that's pending in the Senate right now, which Joe Manchin uh, has for at least for now put on hold. It will actually boost consumer demand, raising prices higher by injecting $150 billion in transfer payments and tax rebates into the economy next year. You mentioned natural gas prices. We ought to be expanding exploration. We ought to be doing more things to get U.S. natural gas into the market to help meet that demand. Doing those things will lessen these inflationary pressures that, that we have. So there are good things that we can do, like lowering energy costs, and there are bad things that Washington could do, like that so-called Build Back Better bill. And so making the right policy choices here will, at the margins, help or hurt, depending on what Washington does. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.